Hey guys, Deslander Magic here, and it's time to continue yesterday's spoiler video. And yes, I'm gonna actually do today's spoiler video as well. But not together, because this is long enough already, so uh, let's just jump in midstream. I don't feel like re recording the intro. Next up, River Kelpie. It's a 5 cost 3 3, and whenever River Kelpie or another permanent enters the battlefield from a graveyard, draw a card. Hard to pull off, but okay. And then whenever a player casts a spell from a graveyard, draw a card. That's pretty nuts. And then persist. So there's your trigger. Uh, when this creature dies, if it had no negative on negative one counters on it, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus or a negative one negative one counter on it. Undying is the one that it enters bigger. So yeah, persist is annoying and he'll trigger himself once. So that's cool. But uh, you know, whatever he just sits there and is obnoxious and draws cards. I mean, I'd rather have a card draw engine that was like, I don't know, indestructible or at the very least not a creature, especially not one with three toughness, but uh, Whatever, you throw them out there, you probably get some cards out of it. Next up, Empowered Auto Generator, which is apparently what they're using to come up with some of these new cards. Uh, it's a four-cost artifact, rare, and it enters the battlefield tapped. Then uh, after that, you can tap it, put a charge counter on Empowered Auto Generator, add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of charge counters on Empowered Auto Generator. And you pay nothing for that ability. This is pretty crazy. So this is a brand new card. Um, I've never seen it before and it's not in any database, but damn, this is pushing the power level up because unless somebody can destroy this artifact, their opponent playing this is going to have all the mana. You're basically playing an additional land every turn, sort of. It's not quite that simple, but this is just so good. So next up, Backdraft Halkite. It's a 5 cost 4-4 four, four flyer, and when it attacks, each instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback. Of course it does. Until end of turn, the flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. So yeah, obviously the flashback spell heavy deck needed this. Next up, it's Ignite the Future. It's a 4 cost sorcery in red. Exile the top 3 cards of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play those cards. If this spell was cast from a graveyard, you may play the cards... This way without paying their mana cost, and the flashback is 8. Unfortunately, there are other ways to play this from your graveyard than paying 8. In some cases, you can basically pay 0, which is pretty messed up. So yeah, to say I don't think they should have printed this is an understatement. Next up, Prismatic Strands. I bet that'll look cool in foil. Uh, it's a 3 cost white instant. Prevent all damage for, uh, that sources of the color of your choice would deal this turn. And then Flashback, which has a cost of tap an untapped white creature you control. That's it. So, I mean, yeah, a lot of commander decks are, you know, two color. It's not like I haven't seen like five and four and whatever, but uh, I'd say it's pretty common to have two, at least in my playgroup. And oh no, if they're playing monocolored. Still, three cost for a selective fog. I mean, I guess it's white, that's cool, but like, eh. Just pay one more, nuke everything, we settle the wreckage. Next up, we got Pramacon Sky Rampart. I don't know what we're looking at here. It is a legendary creature wall. Still don't know what this is. I'm tempted to look it up in the wiki. It's a America colored 1-5. It's a flyer with defender. And as it enters the battlefield, choose left or right. Each player may attack only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction. And Planeswalker is controlled by that opponent. So... This is game warping. Now, people have said, oh, it keeps people from attacking you. Well, not really, because you just narrowed it down for somebody else playing. But it does depend on the direction they pick. So, I don't know. They'd have to start knocking out people to change the target, really. And trust me, people do that on purpose. So this is, by the way, a brand new card, and it is estimated to be about $4, and I'm not surprised. It's pretty messed up. But it's messed up in the fun way. This isn't like, well, there goes the game, it's now broken. It's like, oh, okay. Basically playing, uh, what is that, five-pointed star or whatever, or emperor, I guess, kind of. And those are fun formats. So next up, Wall of Stolen Identity. It's a 0, zero for 4 amazing artwork and you may have wall of stolen identity enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield except that it's a wall in addition to its other types and has defender that's interesting when you do uh do all that tap the copied creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's uh untap step for as long as you control wall of stolen identity so they didn't borrow that identity they stole it 
This is like two small steps away from just casting Kefnet's final word or last word or whatever and just stealing their best creature. I love it. Next up, beautiful artwork on uh, Dockside Extortionist. It's a 1-2 two for 2 Goblin Pirate. Very interesting subtype there. I like that. And when it enters the battlefield, create X treasure tokens or X is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. So he could do nothing or he could do a lot. And you don't have to pay one mana per. I almost feel like you should, but then again, it's red. So yeah, like I said, this could do a lot. It could do a little. It's kind of unreliable and it depends what deck your opponent's playing, which requires like metagaming, like knowing what they're playing before you start playing. And I don't love it, but it's a neat card. Next up, Ralzeric himself. So if you had any doubts that this was an is it deck, it's an is it deck. And this is the Dragon's Maze, uh, Dragon's Maze version of Ral. So he comes out with uh, 4 for 4 there and uh, plus 1, tap target permanent, then untap another target permanent, very nice. Uh, negative 2, he deals 3 damage to any target, very nice. And then negative 7, flip 5 coins, take an extra turn after this one for each coin that comes up heads. What the hell? That is completely insane. The other two are pretty standard to vanilla though, I mean tap manipulation, cool, heavily blue, 3 damage, heavily red, and then... Honestly, the negative seven is pretty much exclusively blue. Although, coin flipping is kind of a red thing. So I get it. It's a little too on the nose, but I, I get it. Next up, a card that easily makes my personal top ten for my most hated cards in the entire history of the game, Ghostly Prison, for which prison decks are named. So it's a three white enchantment. Creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking you. So basically the game's over if they're playing uh, a token deck. But then on the flip side, this can't be countered and there's nothing protecting it. Does not have shroud or hexproof, so just blow it up. But not every deck has removal. Every deck probably should have a little bit of removal, but not every color has the right removal. So I hate this card and I'm sick of looking at it. Let's move on to Personificador Astuto, which is, of course, Clever Impersonator. Uh, somewhat valuable reprint, actually. The uh, Concept Arkir card was six bucks. So anyway, for four mana, double blue, you may have Clever Impersonator enter the battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. Can't get much more flexible than that. I mean, Mirage Mirror is technically more flexible than that, but this you pay once and you're done. Next up, we've got Secrets of the Dead, obviously. Uh, it's a three-cost blue enchantment, and whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, draw a card. Just pure flashback jumpstart, is it? That artwork looks like it could be Squidward's vacation home. Next up, Runic Repetition, a uh, three-cost blue sorcery. Return target exiled card with flashback you own to your hand. In my opinion, anything that interacts with the exile zone is a no-no, unless you're just going to, like, count cards that were exiled. So this does kind of inherently break the rules of the game, but whatever. I mean, you're just returning one card and maybe you get to cast it again. It's not like you get to cast it for free. Not the end of the world. I just stylistically don't like it. Next up, Mystic Retrieval. Ooh, that artwork's hot. So, uh, th four cost, blue sorcery, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand, and then this itself has flashback, but the flashback cost is red. And also, it's three total mana. So, whatever. Next up, oh, it's Faithless Looting. You've heard of this card. It's a red, one cost sorcery, draw two cards, then discard two cards with flashback three. So this has been printed about a million times, usually as a common, and it's still about $2. Classic, classic red card. Next up, Storm Herd. Ooh, that's a lot of flying horses. So it's a 10 cost, uh, double white sorcery, and it says create X11 white Pegasus creature tokens, which seems small for a Pegasus, where X is your life total. Okay, so if you can get to that mana, wow. Next up, Elsha of the Infinite. It's a uh, truly Jeskai card. It's literally a card that has a Jeskai character in it on the plane where Jeskai is. Not because of the colors of the spell. It's literally a Jeskai card. It's not one of those, I'm a pretentious douche and I have things memorized that the average player doesn't, so I'm going to act all high and mighty and call it Jeskai even though it's not. No, this is an actual Jeskai card. Stop confusing people. Now, if you said this is an America spell... Red, white, and blue. Nobody's confused. Nobody forgets what color our flag is. 
But that's a later. Other countries have red, white, and blue in their flag, too, so why don't you use them? Because I live in America. If you live in France, use their flag. I don't give a shit. Use whatever description you think people will know based on where you live. I thought that went without saying. Holy shit. People getting triggered as balls in the comment section over that. So anyway, this is a legendary creature, Jin Monk. That's pretty wild. 3-3, three, three, potential commander, 5 cost, it has prowess, cool. And then you may look at the top card of your library at any time, cool. And you may cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature, non-land card, and you may cast it as though it had flash. Holy crap! So as long as this is in play, you can just chain together a bunch of spells till you hit something that isn't, well, an instant or sorcery. And also, your sorceries aren't. That is insanely powerful. And FYI, this will be printed exclusively in foil. It's currently worth about $9, which I'm not surprised by. And next up, ooh, get excited, it's Garouk. He's not coming back or in the story because there is no story, but, well, here he is. So that's three loyalty for five, which is a shame, but he has plus one, create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Bit of a bodyguard there. And uh, negative three, draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Now that's crazy, but unless you want to waste five mana doing that, which is actually somewhat appropriate. I mean, roughly on par with life's legacy, I guess you would say. But uh, yeah, if you can plus one him, then negative three him, at least three cards are going into your hand. So this guy is like a better draw engine than any blue planeswalker ever printed. This negative six is create a six, six green worm creature token for each land you control. So um, if you're playing multiplayer commander, want to put a target square on your back, this is the best way to do it because he needs to be killed immediately. Next up, Cliffside Rescuer. It's a core soldier, duh. And uh, it has Vigilance, and it's a two-cost white, by the way, and it has Tap, Sacrifice Cliffside Rescuer, target permanent you control gains protection from each opponent until end of turn. I would explain the ins and outs of what that means, but I'm sick of it. Look it up yourself. And finally, we've got Authentic Norwegian Santa. Just kidding, it actually says Fell Down of the Third Path. It's a mythic, legendary creature. Keep that in mind, human artificer, uh, double red, single generic. And if you pay one red double generic, you can tap him and create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So neat little whip of Verbo style effect, but uh, something seems to be missing. Oh yeah, the part where it says exile the card. I feel like you should have to do that. I mean, that's almost an unwritten rule of magic, is if you're going to use something an additional time, exile it so that you can't do it a third time. But uh, Santa here? Yeah, Santa don't give a crap. Santa's going to do whatever the hell he wants. So, quite powerful. The problem is you'd want to mix him with black or blue, but you can't if he's a, your commander because of the color identity rules. So, ooh, that really limits his usefulness, but still, he's crazy powerful. So, I mean, hey, put him in your deck, but uh, as far as interest as a planeswalker, eh. I don't know. I mean, he wouldn't be terrible. It's just you'd have no way to artificially feed your graveyard real quick. But I mean, hey, you want to run this in like a red dragon ramp deck? Oh, go for it. Th this would just kick the crap out of people in a deck like that. So that's all the spoilers for today. I got that done a lot faster than I thought. Leave a big old thumbs up if you appreciate this level of editing and the lack of sleep I'm getting from it. I hate my job and I can't wait to quit. I'll see you guys next video.